lesson on the DG Melodeon uh, for the tune Emma's Waltz. This is a, a lovely uncomplicated waltz uh, from Finland. I'm going to teach you how to play it in a nice simple way and then I'm going to show you a few um, added extras um, if you are a person who's uh, beginning to improve a bit. Please bear in mind that I'm using a fourth button start um, a DG Melodeon. It's a Castanari Lily single reed instrument and um, I've got the Anna Hatter layout on this instrument, but that won't uh, be of any concern in this tune. Um, so if you've got a, just a basic third button start, just obviously move your fingers on, up one button from where I'm showing you on my instrument. Um, it's showing uh, a speed of 160 crotchets per minute, which is quite fast, obviously. So it's a fairly brisk walk to this. There are two parts, the A part and the B part. And um, we're in the key of E minor, so the Fs are sharpened. Your main row will be the D row, this outside row. So that row has got the normal shaped heads and any notes on the uh, G row will have diamond shaped heads. This is something peculiar to my music, but I think it's pretty good. It shows you at a glance which row to find the notes on. So the first bar, you're gonna do this. Uh, it's on the D row, normal heads and it's counted one, two, and three, and. You've got crotchet, two quavers, two quavers, one, two, and three, and. And you start on the note B, which on my instrument is button six, it might be five for you. It's on the pull, finger three, play that note twice, and then uh, without repressing the button, just push in to get the note A, and do that twice in a row. Now you can see a dagger symbol underneath the two A's in that bar. And that's my sign for suggesting that you just get that note by changing the direction of the bellows. You don't have to do that. You can repress the button if you like. It's just what I do. I mean, you could play the whole bar with just a couple of presses, but I think it's nice to play the, all the Bs, repress the button for all the Bs. So, like that. And the left hand here is... E bass and E minor. Now you'll notice my E minor chord sounds a bit hollow. Um, I've actually taped off the thirds uh, of a few of my chords on this instrument for another tune that I'm working on. Um, so all you've got on that E minor chord is the first and the fifth. So it's not really E minor, it's E5, uh, which would work for an E minor uh, or an E major. You're more likely to have the full three note minor chord. So Basically, that's what that is, E minor. So E bass and two E minor chords, the typical um, pa, pa. Chords are usually expressed in melodic music with a lowercase letter, but I always think a, a little E and an M looks a bit weird, looks a bit like um. So I put a capital E for minor. So E bass, that's button number two, inside row, finger two for me. And E minor, button number one, inside row, finger one. And it's one, two, three. So you put those two hands together. And that's what you get. And it says pos H. Now that's my uh, code for position home, the home position. I always think that if the first finger uh, is on the uh, fourth button of a fourth button starting instrument, or third button 
of a third button start instrument. That's what I call the home position. So pos H means that. So there's your first bar. Second bar, even easier. Uh, still on the D row, three crotchets, G, E, G. Finger two, finger one, finger two, counted one, two, three, all on the pull. Again, you've got that um pa pa. So those first two bars, and then bars three and four are the same as one and two. So very much you're on the pull for those first four bars, but luckily in bar five and bar six, you're very much on the push. <laughs> 